All right, guys, so it's been quite a while since we've worked on the Ram Charger. And part of that reason is because I took on that project, which is the Drift Mustang. And the other reason is because of this. And that's because there have been 78 days of over 100 degree weather here in Texas. And the days that it's not 100, it's somewhere in the 90s. So the summer has been extremely difficult to work in the garage because we don't have AC in here, but I think in the future we might do some mini, mini splits. Right, Dad? Mini splits? Mini splits, yes. We, we might do some mini splits because we can't do this for much longer. And thankfully it's getting cooler. Now, not working on the Ram Charger has actually allowed us to continue to buy a lot of parts that we know that we need. And in fact, we also ran into another problem, which is we had a bad head. So dad was able to source another head for a 318 and then he started lapping all the valves. So he started lapping the valves on the other 318 head and decided to remove the head that was good on our 318 and he's finishing up the last exhaust valve. That's right, that's the last one, exhaust. So dad's been carrying the team. So you're probably wondering what the heck have I done? And the answer is absolutely nothing. I've been working on that Mustang, but today we're gonna go ahead, or I'm gonna go ahead and remove, finish removing the front stock leaf springs because we do have a four inch lift kit for it. And I'm gonna go ahead and rotate the axle. We're gonna paint underneath it uh, and then put the springs on. And if I have energy to keep going, I'm gonna keep going. So let's get started. All right, so as you can see right there, I was able to remove the axle completely from underneath the Ram Charger. I got it sitting on two one-ton jack stands, so I can go ahead and you can see the axle right there. I've got to be able to flip it over. I need to clean it off. I had to cut one of the brake lines. It was completely rusted out. So what I'm gonna do right now is actually clean some of this rust off, make sure it's clean, and finish painting underneath the axle. And while the paint is drying, I'm actually gonna go ahead and put the four-inch front leaf springs on the front. And by the time I'm done with that, the paint should be done drying on this front axle and I can go ahead and swing it right back over and attach it with new new U-bolts, put the new leaf springs on there. And I think that's gonna call it for the day. Now I'm saying that like it's gonna take an hour, but it's actually been three hours just to remove the axle because there was some rusty bolts. I ended up just cutting them out because I didn't have time for that. So let's just go ahead and get started. All right guys, major progress here. We finished painting the axle. I had to flip it over. I had to grind it. I had to get it nice and clean, clean with some acetone, paint that up. Went ahead and removed both front uh, leaf packs out of the front of the Ram Charger and prepped the three inch uh, lift, put in the bushings. Uh, still need to finish cleaning up some of the frame and painting, but we're approaching eight o'clock at night. Then we started at two in the afternoon today. So that's gonna wrap it up for today. All right guys, since that last clip, it's been, I think, dad, what, a month and a half? Maybe since more. <laughs> maybe more. I think we're going on two months maybe. since that last clip, but it's kind of that busy season of the year. Just had SEMA um, and then preparation for that, going to that, coming back from that. Um, and then just some other projects. I haven't worked on the Mustang or any other projects really. So we just kind of been uh, waiting. But in the meantime, we've done little things like the engine. So let me show you. So as you can see, there's been a ton of progress on the engine because that's not what it looked like before. In fact, the day before SEMA is when we went ahead and put the water pump timing cover, uh, uh, AC compressor on, and this uh, power steering pump on. We did all that right before I went to SEMA. So what I'm gonna do today is go ahead and put the alternator on, go ahead and put the front crank, go ahead and put the front crank pulley on and the, uh, crank bolt as well and then for the most part that should be done there is a new carburetor but we're not going to put it on just yet because we feel like it's just going to get in the way once we made it up to the transmission and put it back into the truck now speaking of transmission what you got going on over there dad so uh we are installing one of these babies is the transco performance reprogramming kit uh which is going to 
make this 727 work a lot better. This is a great kit. It brings everything you need, uh, including all the drill bits, step-by-step uh, -step instructions. Uh, so this is just gonna make this transmission shift a whole lot better. Uh, that's what we're working on now. Nice, and uh, was this sponsored? Uh, absolutely not. No, <laughs> this is uh, something we're just doing. Yeah, this so... Is a, this is all purchased by us. Yeah, so none of this is sponsored <laughs> at all. Everything we've done has been out of our own pockets. Mm -hmm. So, so once I finish that, those few things left on the motor, gonna go ahead and jump and finish on this front axle, get these leaf springs hung up. That way, once all this is done, transfer case is put together, it can all go in smoothly. So let's get started. All right, boys, there she is, the Mopar 318. For the most part done, I'm not gonna lie, it took me about four hours to put the oil pan on. And what happened was, that's the new oil pan we bought right there next to the trash can, because that's probably where it's going because it wouldn't go in. And dad had trouble installing it before. I thought I'd give it a hand and it just it just wasn't lining up. So I went ahead and took the old oil, plant, uh, oil pan, refurbished it, painted it, cleaned up all the gaskets, put the gaskets in. And during that entire time, you can see right there on the table, dad finished installing the Transgo shift kit. Everything went smooth like butter, no extra bolts, right? No extra bolts, everything went well. It is a very, very easy uh, shift kit to install. You just gotta follow the instructions. Everything is there, uh, totally recommend it. So too easy. So we got ahead. I got a running board over here of um, what I need to do tomorrow, which is what I was supposed to finish today. But you can already tell it's dark out. Night caught us. Um, so we've got 1980 Ram Charger, La Bruta. Uh, La Bruta 2, the goal was 2024 20, first trip. That ain't happening. So I got valve cover tabs to install. I bought some from the auto parts store. I need to go ahead and get the other one for the uh, driver's side valve cover, install the harmonic balancer, the crank pulley, and then all the belts, and then that part's gonna be done. And then we're gonna continue cleaning up, painting, and then assembling the drivetrain. So that's engine, transmission, transfer case. Now, once I'm done with that tomorrow, I'm gonna start uh, putting on the lift kit. So the next time you guys see a video on the Ram Charger, it'll be lifted, engine and trans will be inside where it belongs in its new home. Then we'll be able to put the headers, which are inside the Ram Charger. So like I said, we got a lot of parts. We just don't have a lot of time. And that's what's taking us so long to get ahead on this project. But if you love the Ram Charger and you want to see more updates, check me out on Instagram at Toronto Racing. Hit that subscribe button and leave a comment below and let me know what you think. Until next time, guys, peace out.